Good morning. Wednesday morning, here we are again, and thank you so much for joining me. Uh, today, I am... I'm just trying to figure out why this isn't working. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. There we are. Okay. Um, sorry, there's a little bit of a delay, so I, I thought I wasn't live there. But anyway, good morning, and thank you so much for joining uh, today we're going to do um, this really cool leaf. It's It looks like it's all eaten by insects and all that kind of thing. And um, uh, it's got some really nice light hitting it and that sort of thing. So um, I wanted to tackle this one. So, um, so let's just jump right in. In the meantime, um, you know, you can let a friend know that we're starting and uh, and they can join in. And uh, if you can mention where you're from, that'd be great. Uh, I always like seeing where everybody's from. Good morning, Irina, Nancy, Dorothy, Patricia. Thank you so much for coming. All right, so uh, let me switch over here. And uh, this, is, this is our leaf that we're going to do. So um, it's the time of year. Actually, the leaves are really late this, this year um, falling. Uh, usually they're all gone by Halloween, but here it is uh, mid-November and we've still got quite a few leaves on our trees. <laughs> Hi Marco. Um, so, let's, let's take a look at this for a second and analyze what we're looking at and how we're going to approach it. I do this with all my paintings, uh, all my watercolors, because I think it's really important to plan. And uh, so, this this has a lot of holes in it, and some of you might be tempted to start pulling out masking fluid or something like that, and I wouldn't recommend it in this case. Um, I, I think that I can easily paint these shapes on the clean paper, so I'm not going to do that. Um, <clears throat> there's uh, some very light veins in this leaf. You see some of these veins look very light. Uh, when you look at the back of a leaf, sometimes the... Um, those veins protrude a little bit so I want them to look a little bit dimensional there's peaks and valleys in this and uh, you know so the the leaf looks like it comes up and then it goes down and then it comes up and it goes down and so on so it's, it's very roughly and I want to try and capture that as well there's a strong light source coming from the right hand side so I want to keep this side of all the um, uh, elevated portions uh, highlighted and um, and then there's this this cast shadow which is quite soft there's soft lighting here so since there is soft lighting I'm going to use a little bit of uh, wet on wet for this hi Diana I can actually hear you singing. <laughs> so what I'm going to do to start off with, let's just try an easy one here. We're going to come up here to this little uh, stem and I'm going to wet this, this area. And I'm going to wet it much larger than the area that I want to um, put the, the shadow in. Now for my shadow, I'm, I'm looking at this and this shadow isn't just gray. It actually has a little color in it, so I'm going to put a little color in this. <clears throat> and uh, so I'm, I've wet this section underneath there. I'm blotting my brush and I'm going to get into a little bit of, uh, I think I'm going to be using some neutral tint, but I'm going to tone it a little bit. Uh, with a little bit of, I'm going to say burnt sienna, which is going to make it kind of brown. Now this this puddle that I have here, that's a little bit too runny, right? I've, my brush is full of that color, so I'm taking my paper towel here and I'm blotting all the excess out of the middle, the belly of the brush because all that moisture is going to just make this color run. So I want to make sure that my brush doesn't have so much paint in it that I have no control. All right, so there, nice and soft. I'm going to start here. 
and it's going to start fading. So as it starts fading, I'll just rinse and blot my brush again. And I'm going to just make that a little softer there. Pick up just a tiny bit more color. So I want it a little bit um, a little bit darker right where it makes contact with the end of the stem. So blotting my brush, don't want you can actually see how dry that is. Just right where it makes contact. So I have a shadow now that's soft and it fades. Uh, that's that's kind of what I'm looking for. There we go. Um, I can actually see shadows through some of this stuff in here. I can actually see some shadows. Uh, some of the the little holes in here uh, are pretty light by comparison so I'm going to be putting some of these shadows in um, just within the holes. I, I could choose to mask off these sections since they're lighter but I'm just going to work within the holes. So I'm going to go Burnt Sienna Neutral Tint again uh, the area is very small, so I'm not going to wet it. I'm going to paint in here, and then I will soften edges. So I'm going to paint within this section. Let me zoom in on what I'm doing here. <clears throat> I'm going to quickly rinse and blot my brush. There we go. Quickly rinse and blot my brush. I can't delay because it'll dry and I'm softening that upper edge because I want that shadow to look like it's really really softened in there. It almost has a little bit of a reddish tinge. I might have to start incorporating a little bit of I'm going to put in a little bit of uh, rose door. That might be a little too much. Mix in there, just kind of red up that neutral or that um, burnt sienna a little bit. There, that's a little nicer. And this shadow continues over here to this section, and I'll do this one at the same time. But I need to rinse, blot, and soften this edge. All right, so most of these uh, holes can be just filled in. Hi, Isabel. All right, these aren't really, these are shadows, but they're not like super dark because the, um, the leaf is actually not touching the table. It's not like a flat leaf and it's not sitting right at the table. So it's, it's a cast shadow, but it's very soft because it's got a little distance between the leaf and the table itself. So I don't have to soften everything, but I just want to get um, the idea of some of these shadows in here. too bright or too dark I mean <clears throat> all right so I'm just gonna come in and basically fill in some of these holes it's a little bit like painting lace this uh, you know I referenced lace when I was uh, talking about this particular leaf and uh, it's kind of what it's like once the bugs have got to it and it eats around just leaving this sort of skeleton and okay, these ones are a little bit lighter in here so I'm going to blot that and I'm just going to paint in here. I don't know that it's so much that the the leaf here is lighter as it's a different color. It's more golden. This is a little more reddish. 
So there, I just noticed I, I have missed a couple of holes in my drawing. So I'll quickly draw those in. A big section here. There we go. All right, so I'm going to take the pencil and draw in a couple of these ones I missed. So right here. In really irregular shapes in here. Uh, not much color here at all. Just really, really diluted. All right. Now I'm going to come over here to some of these, which are also the holes here are quite light. The holes here have a little more color. So that's where I'm going to be adding in a little bit more color into some of these uh, holes closer to the center. It's where more of the shadow is showing through those holes. And sorry, I'm making a shadow by holding this paper. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm coming over to um, this outer outer left edge. <clears throat> and what I want to do, I'm going to soften these edges first of all. And get these last few filled in. These ones are actually really dark on this side, like the the sections of leaf are really dark there. So I really don't need to be painting around this, but uh, I'll just stay consistent. So, all right, so I have I have the holes filled in and they look, it, everything looks like it's kind of reversed right now. It looks like I've got the darks in here, but um, hi Melody. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go over to this left side. I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna wet this whole section. So I'm going to zoom out again to this. Almost knocked my coffee over in the process. <laughs> that would not be good. <clears throat> all right, clean water. I'm going to wet all of this. And I'm working, by the way, on arches, 140 pound cold pressed paper. The brush I'm using is a squirrel hair brush. Uh, this one is. I don't know if you can read that, but it says Baya Elk, B-I-A-E-L-K. I purchased it online. It wasn't an expensive brush. It's a travel brush, actually, and uh, squirrel hair. So it comes to a really nice point. Um, I can take the end off and, and recap the, the bristles to keep them safe for traveling and that sort of thing. So it's really handy for that, uh, but I use it all the time. All right, so I'm coming along here, um, working to keep these edges crisp on the actual leaf. I almost said flower, <laughs> but and I got to come all the way down here because. There is shadow all the way down, big section. I'm going to come right to the corner. Now, with all this water on here, the paper is going to start wrinkling a little bit. It's already wrinkling. That's normal. Not going to worry about it. I'm going to wait for some of this moisture to seep into the paper so that when I put the paint on, it will um, uh, like stay up on the surface a little bit longer, right? It can stay afloat when there's more moisture in the paper. So I'm letting it soak into the paper. Because painting on dry paper 
is very thirsty so it, it drinks it in really fast and I don't want it to drink in really fast I want soft edges and so that's what I am waiting for is for this to soak in so I'm just going to redistribute some of this water so that it's uh, uniform right I don't want puddles and I don't want dry spots you know where the paper wrinkles and the high spots dry fast and then the valleys um, start to um, gather puddles so I'm trying to spread it around so that doesn't happen I'm going to come back into my mixture over here and I'm looking at where this goes okay so I'm going to start here I see a little more color in there than what I've got. It's a little too brown, so I'm going to get a little bit more burnt sienna, a little bit more rose door. Rose door is a um, a lot like scarlet lake, so it'll it'll red up my burnt sienna a little bit. That's better. All right, so got a little bit of shadow happening there. Come into here and you know, kind of this part of the leaf is pretty um, raised up from the table, so the cast shadow is a little further away because the light source is over here, so it's making a kind of a longer, soft, soft shadow. So that's why I'm coming in on nice wet paper so that I get that. Um, gentle edge on there so that's not too um, not too harsh um, it, it almost appears a little bit golden in in this uh, shadow as well Whoop, that's a little more red than I wanted come back in and change that a little bit So I need to soften some of this, so I just rinsed and blotted my brush, and so I'm bringing it up to the leaf. So All right, so I'm going to leave that. I'm going to put this little bit of extra dark right here which is actually going to play up the lightness of the leaf in this section. So I'm going to put a little bit more neutral tint, burnt sienna, and quickly get that into this little section here before anything starts to get hard lines. A little more neutral tint. in there it's a little bit more too and I know I'm paying a, a, a lot of attention to to this uh, this shadow that is really not seemingly very important but it is it is important um, okay all right so I want to start um, building my leaf um, did get onto my leaf a little bit here. I'll just clean that up. Uh, right. I can't keep going back into there now. I have to stop because things are starting to dry and I'll start getting hard edges. So, um, my watercolor palette. My watercolor palette, let's see if the name is on it. No name on it. Um, I picked this up at the local store. It, it has it has nothing on it. Like it's just plain. Um, trying to remember. I bought it quite a while ago. I've only just started recently using it. Um, 
but I got this, let's see if it says anything on the bottom. It does not. No, nope, sorry, I can't help you there. <laughs> I don't even know what brand it is. Um, but it is, uh, the, uh, the thing I'm liking about this palette, I mean, there's things I like, there's things I don't like. Um, I like that the fact that everything is in a circle, like a color wheel. So I can arrange my colors um, in a color wheel fashion, more or less. Um, <clears throat> I, did, I did choose one sort of section right, right here where I've got um, kind of my darks clustered. The only one I didn't put in there was this uh, sepia, which seemed to fit more with the neutrals I have over here. But I've got yellow. My yellows are over here. My reds are over here. And my blues are, are down here. So like, like a color wheel, I've got kind of a triad. Um, yeah, I, I got it from... Studio 6, Studio 6 in Markham, uh, but I did get it quite a while ago. I don't know if they have the same kind. Substitute for Rose Door, be very much like Scarlet Lake. Um, yeah, so, all right, so that's, I've allowed this enough time to dry. I can come in and I can start adding in some color. Now, I want to, I want to, put some color into this. What I see is kind of a yellow gold, like almost an orange gold in here. And uh, I see little hints of red, which actually show up more in this picture than it does in my printout. But um, I see little bits of red in there. So I'll use a little bit more of that rose door. Uh, definitely some burnt sienna. And uh, I will shade with some of that neutral tint. So first things first, I am going to come in with my lightest colors first, and then I will glaze on top and build build up on that. Um, I was going to tell you the thing I don't like about this palette, and and the thing I don't like about a lot of palettes is the the material is very very brittle um, like it's very brittle and you have to handle it carefully I, I picked this up one time and I heard crack as I was just as a, the weight of it was I was holding it and I heard crack and one along my edges here I've got a little crack somewhere so you know I kind of got to treat it like gentle gentle but I think what I'm going to do is take it and put a little bit of silicone or something around my edges like just bathtub caulking or something like that to help um, support the edges of this uh, so that I, I don't get that problem. I do like that it that the lid fits on and it does keep the paints you know wet a good long time uh, though when you know in between so if I'm I'm leaving to make dinner or something like that I can come back take the lid off and my paints aren't all dried up so that, that's kind of nice. Um, all right so starting with some brighter colors here. I'm going to go with uh, Gamboge. Now this one's a hue. This is the, These are Da Vinci watercolors that I'm using. So um, the neutral tint is a uh, Winsor Newton, but the Gamboge is a hue and it is um, Da Vinci watercolor. And um, to that I'm going to add a little bit of that Rose Door. But I have to be use it sparingly, right? Because the reds are a lot stronger color than the yellow. So, um, and it's going to look pretty neon when I first do it. But by the time I get some other colors and things in there, it won't look so neon. So I need to paint around holes. So I will have to kind of work carefully, but <clears throat> where I have where I have darks and everything, I probably don't even need to come in with that color. Um, I can make I can mix it into my color that I'm using to create that lace. So I'm going to come in and do the main parts of the leaf. I am working on dry. Uh, I would 
suggest to you that it's um, not a bad idea to work on a bit of a with your board a little bit tilted so that you get a bead so I can lift it up a little bit here and then I have a bead of color see along here gravity's going to pull that down which means I can come in and uh, I can start switching to like sienna burnt sienna and come in and start painting and I'll have no brush marks in there because the paint is flowing down which means you have to paint with runny paint right this whole idea doesn't work if your paint is too thick but keep that lower edge wet all the time So I'm coming in between, like coming around some of these holes. And some of these holes are just plain white in between. And that does make things simple. There's actually kind of a light spot right there. So I'll lift, it, lift that out and replace it with something light. Put some yellow in there. There we go. And as long as I've got gravity working for me, I don't have to race through this like a, I mean I do have to work quickly, but I don't have to race through it like frantically uh, and feeling that panic as I'm painting. Um, <laughs> I know that panic feeling well. I, I've experienced it many times in the past. So I won't bother coming into all of the um, the little uh, bits up in here. I'm just going to skip around that. Those can be those can be done like a detail. I'm wor worried about the big washes at the moment, the big sections. So so this is a little bit of a different color than what I had used previously. And obviously, if I get the the whole shapes wrong, what does it matter? <laughs> it really doesn't. They're it's all worm eaten and everything, so it's not going to be a deal breaker no matter what. <clears throat> all right, but I got to watch this edge here. I don't want that drying on me, so I got to babysit that one. So I'm going to come in and get my paint flowing again. This area is going to get real dark, so I might come in and well, I can even do a little neutral tint in this portion. I'm going to come in here. All that area is dark in there. But I have to keep remembering I'm doing the whole thing. I'm not just doing that one section. And it's very easy to get um, distracted by that and not uh, finish the job that you're supposed to be doing. So uh, if, I, if it does get patchy though, hey, it's a leaf, right? It's an old leaf that's decaying and so, you know, Take the stress out of it for yourself. Just work quick to the best of your ability, but don't um, don't get too uh, perfectionist about it. I know that sounds funny coming from me. <laughs> I am a little bit. I have been accused of that. Wouldn't be the first time. Okay, so that's a big hole there, and some of it's light and some of it's dark. I'm just going to leave that right there and come back over here because time's ticking here. I got to get this this in here. I'm going to come over to my darker one again.
So even though I'm working on dry, I can do this without, you know, a lot of brush mark. I did get a little bit of a blossom here though. It actually adds some character. So I, I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it. I'm not going to fuss with that. I knew I, I kind of knew I had gone in with my brush too wet. And that's where the blossoms come from. Your brush is wetter than the paper. But. I'm just going to keep walking back and forth from section to section and keep building it up. This is going to be the, the real foundation for this painting, right? This is swash. But I can build on it. All right, so all these little spaces in between, I'll come back and do that. Um, after. I'm going to worry about the big spaces first. I've got to get over here to this side as well. Oh, I think I forgot a little, I forgot a little section in there. I have to come back and revisit that. Make sure that bead is there. Sorry if I sound like a broken record, but these things are kind of important. I'll be glad when this wash is done. Just then I can, I can relax. This is this is the toughest part, I think, is getting this wash in. It'd be easy if I if I masked that off. Sure, it would be easy. I could just put the whole thing in. But that would take too much time for a live demo, so I'm painting around stuff. A nice golden color in there. Like that. And I do like these transitions from from gold to kind of that reddish brown color, the sienna type color. slowing down it's to get the shape of the leaf here the the edge of it that sawtooth type of edge but I need to keep going with my other color too so I have to keep switching back and forth that's going to make a blossom there I can feel it but I want these two to transition into each other Got a little more red in there. It's kind of nice. I like those variations. Now I, I could feel that drying, so I'm going to just use the seam of the the uh, the vein of the leaf to get that other part in. Just paint on the right side of that vein and then if there's a line it's on the vein so it won't be so so noticeable. And come over here to this side. Okay, so I think I have 
pretty much added color to the entire leaf now. I just put the board down flat. I'm going to revisit because I can tell some of these are going to just dry a little too light for me. So I'm just going to come in and uh, add a little bit more color to some of this. Now I said I could come back in and add um, gold. what gold paint I used. It was um, gamboge hue, uh, some rose door, burnt sienna. All right, so I have all of those kind of happening in here. So here's where I can come in between all of these uh, little shadows with this golden color. And I can use just the point of my brush. These, The thing I like about these uh, squirrel hair brushes is they have great points. Um, you can really come in and create some shapes. And it is important that these aren't just lines. Uh, I know it's very tempting. They kind of look like lines. But where they intersect is usually a little bit bigger. You know, it's almost like um, uh, almost like a, when when you get uh, streets converging and there's a traffic circle in the middle, that kind of thing, right? So you get kind of a segment in the middle of all these intersections that is a little bit wider because they kind of branch out in different directions. It's not like, you know, square or anything like that. All right. So that's getting some of that in there and just coming in to, to make sure I get it nicely defined. So, have you guys fit, started your Christmas shopping? We're in mid-November. I had to go to the store the other day, and oh my goodness, it was so packed, I couldn't get over it. You sure wouldn't know there was a pandemic going on. But it was uh, packed. And I was in and out so fast. <laughs> I did not hang around. I like to try to do as much, uh, you know, support my local people as much as possible, as everybody should, right? Support your local people, small business and that sort of thing, as much as possible this Christmas. Um, all right, so I've got uh, some light colors in there. That's kind of what I was going for. Uh, I do have a couple of hard edges forming here, but I'm not really concerned about it. Um, checking. Uh, oh, thank you, Marie. And good morning. All right, so there is kind of a section up here I kind of missed. Looks like I've got a little bit of a segment in here that I need to add in. Whoop. Don't want to put my hand in wet paint. Now this segment's going to be a little bit darker, so I don't need it quite as golden. Really trying to utilize the, uh, the point of my brush here for these little tiny corners. If you round off things that should be pointed, um, sometimes it throws off, you know, what, what it is you're trying to do. So, um, you know, you need a brush with a good point. If, if you don't have one, 
put it on your shopping list. It's or put it on your wish list at least. <laughs> but um, you know, it's it's something that is very helpful uh, when you are painting to be able to paint in between little sections. All right, so now that I have some of this dark color on the go here, I'm going to take some of that burnt sienna neutral tint again, make it a little darker, and I will start painting in some of the the lacy stuff that's in in here. I think I'm going to have to dry this because I keep putting my hand in it <laughs> and it's wet. So Bear with me one second. I'm going to mute and uh, dry this. There we go. All right, so into my dark color here, that is uh, neutral tint and uh, burnt sienna. And I'm gonna get some of this uh, lacy stuff going on here. It is almost like a network of cobweb type of thing. It's kind of cool, it's like the, we don't really think about it too much till we see a life, leaf like this, but it has a skeleton much like we do, you know, where this is just the, the bare stuff. little holes in there everywhere. I like these kind of leaves better than the, you know, the really beautiful, brand new, newly fallen, although the colors are attractive, they don't have the same character that these older decaying leaves have. I think that they're kind of, kind of pretty in their own, their own way. All right, so I'm not going to have a chance to finish up this whole thing. Um, before that paint starts to dry. So I'll just soften this edge. I'm just gonna soften that edge. So I can so I can build it into what I'm going to do after. So that's that's a little tip there. If you if you need to stop for some reason, you know, like Marco had uh, had to talk to somebody. So you know if you have something like that that comes up um, and you're you're painting in and let's say you're in the middle of uh, something like this section here and I'm painting away and I get an interruption, I can actually just stop and, and soften an edge and then I'll be able to continue on. Um, you know, we kind of think that it's all connected so we have to keep going, but I can just soften this edge. There we go, I'll soften that edge and then I'll be able to come back in and sort of connect those pieces. But I want to get this little network of, of these lines in here. So what I don't want to do here is just do lines. Okay, so this is what I see time and time again. So you get you get something like this, and it is line, 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 and and so on. And you just get, it looks like a bunch of lines, but they're where they intersect, they have to, um, they're not per perfectly square. They're not 
perfect lines either. You know, they're kind of jagged and, you know, they're so imperfect. And there's these little thicker parts right where they intersect. And the lines get thicker and thinner and all of that sort of thing. And I know it's a little tiny detail and everything, but I do think it makes a big difference. So why don't I zoom in while I'm doing this section because it's it's a little bit of a fuss, but uh, kind of like it anyway. I like doing this sort of thing. And I noticed too that there are sections within here that are darker. Say these ones are much darker than say up here. So I don't want to just treat it all the same. I have several colors on the go here, and uh, that's going to allow me to uh, take care of this stuff. And, you know, do I have to stay true to my picture? No. It's a guideline. Uh, the, the structure of a leaf, however, uh, can be important. Uh, you know, if you're showing kind of the skeleton, um, you know, you can't just wing it entirely. You need to use your reference uh, for clues as to, you know, sort of what direction. Like there's kind of a dominant direction like, like this on this leaf and that type of thing. So this kind of thing is really good to do if, you know, if you're somebody with a little bit of a shaky hand because your lines won't be so perfect and, and contrived because that doesn't, that won't look natural, right? It won't look natural. It'll just look kind of funny. It's tempting to do it fussy and everything like that, but uh, I'll try not to. And again, along this bottom, I want to get this in here, but I want to blend it into what's there. So put in some color and I will just soften the edge of it. There we go. So then I can, I can follow up and come into that area again without, without any hard lines showing through what I'm doing, right? Because you always get these sort of seams that happen in watercolor if you let edges dry where they shouldn't. So I'm going to go over here into my more golden tones and start uh, working into those. Can't be too light though, so it may be golden, but I need enough pigment in there for that to look normal. This could be a little darker right there. Fussy stuff, but I, that's my thing, right? I love I love being fussy. Um, This is the most interesting part, I think. Those holes, the, the little holes are the most interesting. <laughs> oh, good morning, Bev. Thanks for joining. You know, I really, really love that you guys come up regular and, and spend your Wednesday mornings with me, at least for an hour or so. And, uh, you know, it really means a lot. Thank you so much. Um, do mention to anybody 
that you think might be interested, you know, let them know too. It helps me, I know. Don't get uh, don't get a lot of help from uh, the algorithm, as they say. They I think word of mouth is always the best advertising anyway. All right, so I just keep switching up the colors here, uh, you know, keeping it interesting as much as possible, different different colors. Even though the color shifts are kind of subtle, I, I think that they, they are visible in, in what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to come in and do this. I think that's just about it. You know, there might be some little bits I can sort of add in if I want, but I, th I think that's pretty much got it. So I'm going to take a little bit more say burnt sienna in here. This looks like it isn't quite as golden as I had it. Now this little section I'm going to do, I'm going to take this up to the vein. All right, so there's a vein that comes along here. And right up the edge of the leaf there, the, the edge of outside edge. And I'm going to come along this vein. And the vein isn't perfectly straight. It's, it's actually got a little bit of a curve to it. And just like I did down here, I'm going to soften some edges. So I'm going to soften this edge, rinse, blot, and soften it quick. You have to, you do have to be quick about this because if if your paint starts to dry, then uh, you can't, the you know if it starts to dry, the edge won't soften. All right, so there's some of this up here as well, but I'm going to come up and get a little bit more in that little area there. And then I'll do a little more softening. And yeah, I'm not doing too much with the veins at the moment but I will come in later. These, this particular vein, is, you'd think they'd all be the same, wouldn't you? But this one is dark, these ones are lighter. So these ones I'm going to paint around, whereas this one I will add on. So there's the difference. And you do have to look. You have to look at your reference and, and see what it is you're painting. So into my raw sienna burnt, pardon me, burnt sienna, not raw sienna, burnt sienna. And I'm going to come along this vein here. So now I'm going to be working pretty much the sections that I'm seeing uh, between the veins. So one section at a time I'm just going to be working. So there's one section and this is where I need to leave that little, and I mean it's a sliver, right? Just a little sliver of space there. And I can soften this edge. So it does get a little bit light in the middle again. And this is going to get dark into there, so I'll just sort of blend that out. And I'm going to put a little bit more color, drop it into this wet paint here. Put a little bit more color in a couple of spots here. 
the paint on the paper is still wet so I can drop color into it so they call this charging color in and let it spread and that's what's going to give you that three-dimensional effect for the leaves uh, you know that they're gonna look like the veins are you know three-dimensional and uh, come along here it's not quite as wet as I had hoped but it's okay Needed a slight edge there too, so just coming into that. Getting a little bit of that rose door in there just because I like the the redness of it but quite uh, kind of dark and gray in this section so mostly I'm just going to be painting this in we won't see a lot of detail in here because it's in shadow but there's kind of some irregular shapes in there don't know what it is I just see irregular shapes that's what I'm painting I'm painting what I see, not what I think should be there. Now I can come back into that area that I had the soft blending and I can actually paint into it and I have no hard lines in there because of that. I like how this leaf almost has looks like it has uh, almost burnt edges. You know, they're they're a little bit dark right along there. Which looks really nice with the little bit of shadow that we put in earlier. A bit more neutral tint, I think. You know, there's literally thousands of leaves that fall in my yard every year. And every one of them is like a little work of art. There's endless reference material here. So I'm softening this edge because um, I don't want that to harden and uh, give me a uh, uh, kind of a rough crisp edge. There's quite a bit of dark in here. So learning how to uh, soften edges is a skill in watercolor that you know you pretty much need to know. <laughs> There's going to be at least a couple of times that you're going to use it in every painting. At least that's been my experience. And you, if you do enough of it, you soon learn um, 
the um, the technique, right? So you'll learn how much to blot and how much to load into your brush and everything else. Where did I get this brush? I bought this brush from a website called AliExpress. A L I E X P R E S S. Alex AliExpress. AliExpress. And um, that's where I got it. So. Morning, Jan. Hi, Joy. Uh, all right, so convenient stopping places are going to be these veins. Uh, these veins uh, give you a natural place where you can stop. Set my cold coffee again. Um, I'm going to take this neutral tint and burnt sienna. I want to paint this stem in. Okay, so I just painted it one flat color, but I'm going to go into my neutral tint. And just with the point of my brush, I'm going to hit this left edge here. I'm going to hit the underside of this, this uh, I don't know what you call that part, the stem, I guess. Okay. So there's a little variation that is happening. It's probably too dark for the camera to pick up on, but but there is a difference, I can see. Um, maybe you can see it too, I hope you can. Now, I wanted to get that dark in there because that tells me where I'm going with the rest of my values here, right? I see the white of the paper, which is my lightest value. Now I see one of the darkest things in my painting. So I'm going to um, sort of riff off of that, I guess, um, and figure out my other values. I can I can see the full range. Whoop, that was not intended. Let's get that washed off. I can. That was on my hand, I think. I have to scrub that off, Mr. Clean, that later. All right, so um, back to my back to my main part of my leaf. I'm coming in with my uh, burnt sienna. Neutral tint again. Uh, maybe a little bit of that rose door as well. Remember to leave that little gap, and it's just a sliver. And this one I see it, and then it disappears. All right? So this, this is one that really just doesn't go all the way down. This vein doesn't go all the way down where I can see where it ends. It kind of disappears into the shadows. So I don't want to get too crazy there. I'm 
going to rinse my brush and get my blotting brush, blotting uh, towel here and soften some edges. I'm working around those shapes again. Those little holes, they're really important. Switching to a little bit more burnt sienna here for this, just because I think that's going to get a little warmer in there. So when you're adding things like shadows and highlights and all of those kinds of things, um, be thinking about whether or not what you're looking at is not just lighter or darker, but whether it's warmer or cooler reactivating the underlayer. Yeah, let it dry. <laughs> uh, the best the best way not to reactivate an underlayer is to let it dry. Also, uh, I do like these uh, uh, squirrel hair brushes. They're very soft bristles. So when you go in, you just go in quick and don't play around with it. So if I keep coming in here and I keep playing with this, you can see that what I'm doing is, you know, I'm I'm move I'm lifting up that first layer. So I don't want to uh, I don't want to be activating reactivating that layer. So so that's what I would recommend is uh, to just uh, get in and get out. Get in, do what you need to, and then get out of there because the more you play or more you stay in that spot um, the higher the risk of reactivating that first layer so like I'm coming in with a little bit more here for instance and I don't want to activate that so I'm using I'm using a feather touch for this to make sure that I don't reactivate that that first layer and then if I need to I will just touch in a little bit of detail okay this edge down here I should have softened that I did not get back to it in time but I think I can soften it. Some paints you can, some paints you can't. Uh, sometimes you go back into something and it will not soften. It will be quite staining. It will leave a mark there. But letting layers dry uh, is really quite key to um, not reactivating the first layer. When paint is fresh, it reactivates like super easy, super easy. And so you, you do have to use a very, very delicate touch when you're coming into those things. Rinse, blot, soften the edges. It doesn't like on a subject like this. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit patchy anyway. Um, it, it just adds to the character, I think. Um, this looks 
a little funny here. I'm gonna and I could fuss and play till I'm blue in the face. But I'll try to speed it up a little bit. Otherwise you guys are gonna get bored. You're gonna leave me. Then I'll be painting all by myself. Put a little bit of color in and then I'll drop more color into it. Like right along this edge, for example, it's got just a little bit of color there. If I put it in while it's wet, there's some, I don't know, it almost looks like a wart on there, but it's not. It's just something. Something decaying on it, I guess. back to my lighter color here. And there's another vein that comes down, so I want <clears throat> to leave a space for that. So, like, right down here, there's another, another vein. I have to leave a spot, so if this is negative painting I'm doing here, I've got to work around these places. Right? I've got to leave the vein behind. So by painting the spaces between, I'm actually creating the veins. Oh, there's some little lines and things in there, but not going to fuss with that yet. I'll come in a little lighter. Starting to get a little bit lighter down through this little segment here. And you're seeing it up, up very close. Uh, you know, if you're on a PC or whatever, you're seeing kind of all the imperfections and stuff, but zoom out and things will start to look a little more normal. And it's like that with your painting. Sometimes you're right on top of it and you don't see the forest for the trees because you're so close to it, right? You're just so wrapped up in what you're doing that all you see is your little imperfections and um, that that I find is, is one of the hardest things to to learn about watercolor is that you've got to you've got to let go of some some stuff and uh, let the little imperfections be. That's all part of the medium, right? So I'm going to come down here to this part at the tip. See, there's a vein right here, so I, that's a natural place for me to stop painting that area and move on down. So I'm going to take some occasional bright color and just drop it in, kind of like the last hurrah for this, <laughs> this poor old leaf little tiny bit of color. I love painting into wet color. Um, you get such gorgeous uh, melting that happens with just so naturally, right, with watercolor.
those little spots are kind of on dry but I don't want them too dark so I have to blot it quick and um, all right so I really want to give a little bit more attention to this this main one that's coming down here because it's coming around and it's actually this vein is coming down right in the middle of all those little holes so I'm darkening some of the side but I'm also darkening the little um, lacy bits that are remaining the little strands that are connecting those shapes now <clears throat> I think I'm going to turn this uh, just to make it a little easier to paint because I and I'll turn my reference at the same time this way <laughs> so I have it oriented properly and I want to come in and get some of these darks in along here I'm going to rinse and soften some of this say rinse blot and soften it's not just a, a rinse because that would make it too wet okay so that little bit It's, it's fussy, but what a, what a work of art it is. I actually don't think I have this in the right place. I think this needs to go up a little bit. So I'm going to change something here. I just noticed something. I've got this a uh, little too low. More like that. All right, so I'm going to lift out a little color here because that's not supposed to be that dark. clean paper towel blot voila I moved it now that works really well when you're working with particular colors um, do find out which colors will lift not all of them will But I'm going to go a little bit more uh, golden, I think, in that section. So I don't want it to look like I lifted it out and it's got a bald spot. It should match other things. There we go. shaping up getting there so let me zoom out and we'll see how it's looking um, I may need to come in and darken this shadow a little bit more we'll see I'm going to um, bring a little more color along this uh, Part of the leaf here it's a little more gold and orange so I'm going to bring a little bit more color in here I'm just kind of blending it into what's already there getting a little bit more sure that nice sort of golden orange color so a little more that means a little bit more of the yellow and the red so the gamboge hue and the rose door or scarlet lake is similar to rose door it's a kind of an orangey red
bringing a little bit more color into some of this. richens it a little bit. Might have thought, okay, she's done, but I'm still at it. <laughs> still bringing in colors. And I do think that you, you need to ask yourself in the middle of your painting, like, could I push this a little more? Not be too afraid to do it, because I find a lot of my students will kind of stop before the greatness happens, right? They're so worried about it, um, a mistake happening that they miss out on the greatness, right? So don't be afraid to push the limits. It's just a piece of paper, right? Just a piece of paper. So I'm really liking the warmth that's happening here. You see, you know, this looks a little bit flatter. It doesn't, I mean, I haven't done the build up on it anyway, but um, it doesn't have the same vibrancy does look a little neon on my screen though. In person it doesn't. Um, let me see if I can make an adjustment here to my screen so that it doesn't uh, look too... Um, too overly uh, saturated there. First I'll take down... Let's see take down the saturation a bit because it's like a little bit wild. Oh, I'm adjusting the wrong one. Hang on. That's why it's not working. Here we go. Take down the contrast a little bit and the saturation is a little bit wonky. There, <laughs> that's a little more normal. Uh, okay, so is there anything else I can adjust here? I don't think so. I think that's uh, not bad. Okay, so I'll leave it at that and uh, close that. All right, so now it's not so neon looking and looks a little bit more like uh, like it actually is on on my screen looks like it is on my painting rather my screen looks better all right so back to that nice golden color i'm gonna come over here All right, so this part of the leaf, it has like uh, little speckles and things like that happening in there too. Um, I don't know if you can tell on the, you might not be able to tell on the reference, it's not that big, but uh, there's some little speckles and stuff in there. So I'm going to take advantage of that. I'm going to wet this whole section actually. Wet it with color. I'm not wetting it with just water. I've got some color in my brush too. But I want to get this whole thing kind of wet in here and then I'm going to put some darks into it to get that, you know, that up down the ruffles, the folds. It's almost like fabric folds. And I've often said, you know, if you can paint fabric, Fabric's a really good thing to practice with uh, because you can really um, paint nearly anything if you can paint fabric well. Fabric's challenging because you're on a flat piece of paper, you're trying to describe the up and the down and the light and the dark. Like the, the way that the folds go up, down, and rolling, folded. 
you know, you're really challenging yourself when you're painting fabric. It's one of the best bits of practice that you could give yourself. Getting this all wet in here so that I can drop in some of those darks. I have to keep my edges. Alright, so I'm going to come into some of this dark and figure out the best places to put it. So see that there's kind of this little section right here. And there's another one right here that's really nice. Trying to get those edges shaped nicely. That's quite a nice uh, <clears throat> sense of rolling there. Now I've hit a dry spot in that spot. So I'll put the paint on and I'll soften the edge. There we go. And there's a little bit of that sort of burnt edge feeling on this side as well. So kind of tucked in around all of the these uh, holes, little worm holes. It's all a little bit browned there. It's, you know, it's like an apple goes brown kind of thing. And then there's some smaller details I can put in with uh, some darks. Now, when I say darks, I mean I am going to a darker color, but um, but I do want to dilute it because some of it is more subtle. So it's it's a darker, duller color, but it's also on the subtle side. So. I've diluted some of the color here on my palette and I will come in to describe some of these veins. And these veins are funny. They're they're almost like they have little thorns on them. So And every once in a while I'm giving it a little um, little flick. Really getting up on the point of the brush for this stuff because I want to keep it subtle. If this becomes too too dominant, it becomes the only thing you see when you look at this. And I really want the holes to be um, the dominant thing here.
Right, so I think I am just about um, at the stopping point here. I do have to get ready for another class, but um, I think that's given me quite a uh, an effective 3D leaf. Um, I might I might strengthen some of the shadows in here so I'll take some of that color here and I'll just strengthen some of that in here To really make that look convincing, the, you know, you need to have the shadows the right value. So I do need to come in and darken these. And they start getting a bit lighter again. The strength of the shadows will really describe the, um, the dimensionality of it. Hi, Victor. Welcome. Um, okay, so I'm going to turn this sideways. And I'm going to darken this shadow right here. But then I really need to soften that edge. So I'm rinsing and blotting quickly. And I'm going to blend that out. Okay. And I will need to do something like that here too, where it's got to be a little bit darker. I'll lay the brush down and kind of get the side of the brush to give me that shadow, or to give me the softness, I should say. There, see, D darkening these shadows makes it look even more dimensional. Like, right, looks like more like I could pick it up. So, it is important to revisit some of these things sometimes. Um, like a little bit of that golden color in this part of the shadow. So I'm just putting just a very, very thin, like very weak tea kind of thing in that section there. I'll just soften it till I don't have a hard edge. Even though it's weak tea, I don't, I don't want a hard edge. A little more like what I was looking for and perhaps a little oops that was dry I forgot to wet it first wet it now get some of that same golden color in there gold is really helping this I think that nice nice color and I'm going to wrap this one up for today so thank you so much for joining me um, I guess we'll start transitioning into some Christmas themes, I guess, as we get come to uh, December. And uh, not sure what yet, but I will come up with something. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for joining, and we will see you next time. Bye for now.